Hey guys, this is Isaac. Um, just wanted to give you a little run through of a great, great little game of League of Legends I played just just recently, and it was such a one-sided beating, but I just loved it. So it also really highlighted just how one-sided that Riot Games can match teams, and it's frustrating when you're on the losing side of it, but that's just how it is. So, on the loading screen it showed that the opposing team had no mastery points in any of their champions, like they were just really, really inexperienced, and and our team was the opposite. I was like, this is really going to go one of two ways. Either they're legitimately inexperienced, or we've got a whole bunch of players that are using a fake account, or they're using a duplicate account, and they actually have experience with their champions, but just, they're trying to hide it. And it went totally the, the first way. It was brutal. So, Alawi versus Garen. This is not really a bad matchup for Alawi if she's a good, uh, good player, but we can see from the trades here, like, Alawi isn't really making a lot of effort to to actually trade. Like, she has Grasp of the Undying as her primary rune. Same with Garen. But somehow, like, not even trying to get the auto attack and proc that, just throwing out that tentacle, throwing out that slam, and I'm just diving in like, okay, let's go. Straight up crazy. And right there, she actually tried to just fight me. Even though I've got the grass proc, my Q's up, I'm beating her to death with the E, and I've got Ignite. She knows I've got Ignite. And there's like 100% no way that you can fight that. You can just run like crazy. And I'm just like, hey, let's go. Let's dive in there. Um, and then teleporting right in and just going right back at it. Okay, great. I respect that because you're trying to get your, your farm up, right? But they just come in. Here comes Nunu. So, spin out of there. Almost could have killed Nuno. Almost. But it was just... It was a close fight. And this Nuno is practically dead at this point. Um, so I'm telling Rengar, it's a free kill, man. Just get up here and whack this guy. And he's like, oh, I'm on it, bro. I'm on it. And so Rengar just dies right in. Nuno, that Q ability, is sustained is unreal. Uh, just about comes back to full health. It doesn't matter because Rengar is just so strong. Like, he can burst people, like, just insanely fast. Anyway. At this point, um, let's pull up the, uh, so I just grabbed a ruby crystal for the health and a longsword for attack damage. This is all Garen really needs. Uh, straight health and attack damage. He turns into a monster. Like, there's no effort required. So in this game, we're going to see, okay, so Vanguard just went for the skirmisher saber. Very safe, easy pick there. Callista already has two kills, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, yeah, so this entire game is just a beating. I don't think I've seen another game like this where it's so one-sided. It's, it's thankfully it's somewhat rare that this happens. But again, this comes down to Riot Games just picks random people, it seems, put them together, and there's no respect to who actually has experience. And so it's very unfair for the people that are on the losing side of this. So Alawi, as it turns out from the game chat, is actually a support main. She is mostly in the bottom lane like, helping the ADC and uh, healing up, guarding and whatever. Not a top lane person at all. Not even, not even trying to be the top lane, which totally makes sense based on what I'm seeing. 
So there's a couple issues there. It's, it's how to trade, how to just engage like that. You, you go in and attack and back out. Go in and attack, back out. Get your opponent low on health and then finish them. That's, that's really simple. So yeah, my knight's up. I'm almost level six. Almost ready for that all-in dive. That Garen is just so awesome. Now. There it is. There's level six, and at this point, Alawi has to stay really, really safe. Right now, it's one and one. You know, it's one to go or whatever. But that's it. It's done. So tonight, the ultimate, easy. I'm still at three-quarter health. <laughs> but this is the moment that defines a good player versus a bad player is when you're, you're on a losing streak. If you're 2 and 0, 0 and 2, whatever it is, uh, I'm at 42 CS, you get 16 CS. I'm getting a tip first tower play, got 160 gold. It's a snowball right now. Ideally, she needs to back out and play it really, really safe. Unfortunately, she's buying an old magic rental. 25 magic resistance against a full 80 champion. I don't understand that. Boots? Okay. I guess the boots are fine, but just one one piece of armor. Shut down. A piece of health. Something to mitigate this enormous amount of damage that I'm just slamming down. Uh, yeah, the boots are helping her keep a little bit of range on me, but not by much. And so it's 53 CS to 16 right here, it's more than double. So the gold advantage is huge right now. She's staying under tower, she'd have to fight just to hold the wave there. Meanwhile, I'm getting boots. I'm also getting a phage. Every time I attack, I will automatically gain 20 movement speed. Just makes it so much easier to run people down. And I got a Warhammer just because the cooldown reduction is okay, the damage is good. I'm just building straight damage and, and a little bit of tank. And I'm just turning into a freight train. So this is where you have to play very, very carefully when you're against a Garen that's this fit. Because these small advantages that I'm getting in the early game are turning into huge advantages. At the um, at this point, it's just yeah, it's gonna be brutal. So our team is 12, five. We have a gold advantage of 3.2k. That's pretty insane. And Alawi is just like nazi, like charging in. So she drops the E, and I'm just like, okay, let's go. <laughs> You want to you do that? I'll just kill you right under your tower. And yeah, he just keeps coming in. He just keeps coming in. He's not backing out. Well, you, know, you fight a Garen all in when he's this fed, it's not going to be And a fed Garen takes tower really fast. So I'm killing her and I'm chunking this tower for 160 gold per plate. It's and there's nobody on the other team even trying to slow me down. Killings. So this is a free top tower. Uh, like, it is just getting obliterated. There it is. There's like two free plates right there. And all of a sudden she decides to teleport in. Well, it's a little too late right now. You wasted that teleport. I'm already gone. And this is how the entire game is going to go. Just spoiler alert. So... Triple the CS, uh, three kills, we're literally triple everything, and I just went ahead and grabbed a Jordan's Fist. <laughs> more damage, more health, the more units I kill, the more health I get. Uh, our Rengar was just, he's a beast right now, he's eight and one, and it's, it's ten minutes into the game, he's gotten almost a kill a minute. That's just insane. He's got so much damage here. He's already got a skirmisher saber. He's got movement speed and damage. That's all I'm gonna need. He's obliterating everybody. Their jungle is 0-4. Their top is 0-3. Um, 
their bot lane is the only one doing anything at just a couple kills each. I mean, I've seen AI opponents definitely better than this, but this is all, again, Riot's fault. They didn't have to match players that are just completely, completely new. I think it's players that are just yeah, there's another free kill, whoop de doo And the power's going down at 11 minutes. We have an infernal break, that's helping a little bit, but this is mostly just some easy mistakes being made. Like, they should have just played differently, and they're, they're making normal mistakes, but man. Anyway. I've been on the other side of this, where it's five players that are doing really horrible against five players that are just stomping them. It's not fun on the other side. It sucks, I get that. But, boy, this was, this was, this was fun to win, but it was almost embarrassing. It just felt, felt like you were just beating children, you know, uh, taking candy from a baby. So, at this point, we're just capitalizing on the game in the top, uh, in the top lane here. Uh, I went ahead and got boots and mobility. So I just want to be able to run around the map like, like a nuclear cruise missile and just run amok. Also grab the uh, Kindle gem for a little bit of control. And yeah, we're just chunking the mid lane completely. We don't have to mess with top lane anymore. It's you know, it'll take care of itself. We're going to take our gains and pressure other lanes. And again, this Alawi is choosing to follow us. Legendary. But he isn't really helping anything because, you know, like, in, the, in my situation, if I was in that same boat, I would be trying to at least um, slow down the, the incredible split pushing and the, like, yeah, push my own lane to keep me running the loose the entire game. I almost flashed and chased after this pipe, but it was like, ah, I get it. He's just gonna kite me out until I die in the tower. Played a little bit safe there. But we're. Again, the lot was just chasing me, and it's like, you can't do anything. You can't do anything against me. Like, it's a complete way to do the where I totally did a little stupid plot right there. I don't even know what I was, I don't know what I was thinking. But like, they're going to pop lane. Mid lane is not. Twisted Fate is in the mid lane, and he's at least like shoving that mid lane tower. Trying to keep us from, um, from just shoving other lanes. Like, we have to divert back to defend that mid lane. But again, he's just dying in no. It's ultimately a waste. In my opinion, with the two Infernal Drakes, uh, we have like an 8,000 gold lead, an 8.5 gold lead. It's 25 to 9. Um, we have a jungle that's 10 and 1. With three assists. Top lane and mid lane, both 5 and 0. Oh. There's, there's no stopping this game at this point. There is no stopping this. It's, it's, I think the only way you could win this would be some professional players, like, doing something insane action work. Even then, you know, it's going to be hard to do that to win the right? We have a little bit of a stall at this point in the game where they turtle up really well, and they're just holding these lanes as hard as they can. Um, it's, they're actually working well as a team, they're shoving into their face, but we're still just, we're just obliterating them, it's just not even fair. Um, so yeah, it ultimately just turns into this kill fast. Uh, at this point I grab a pickaxe, just more damage, and I'm just building whatever I feel like 
because it won't matter what I build. It's, it's just going to be uh, the game's over, you know. So I, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to work at it. Do whatever I want. So here is where losing hard and just pressing like the two of them allowing me and Moon to just win pull out here. GP's with them. Three of them are just going nuts trying to kill me. They're using all their abilities. They're using everything they've got. And they can't even kill me. Because even though I'm not building a lot of tank stuff, I got Storm's Fist, Fade, I'm just building some HP. I have no armor items. I have no magic resist items. My character does not have any tank items. But Garen is naturally um, tanky. I've got 126 armor, 108 magic resist. That's just the way Garen is. Uh, I think my runes, I went... Uh, um, ah, crap, I don't know how to look up runes from this page. There it is. So, yeah, I got demolished because you, know, you gotta have demolish on freaking Garen. Conditioning is really good because you get the you increase armor and magic resist by 5% after 10 minutes. And it just snowballs super hard. Overgrowth because I like just being thick. And Grasp of the Undying is amazing on Garen. So, I also have celerity because the movement speed means I can move like a comet. Especially with the uh, boots of Squidward. So, I can build straight damage and still be a monster in terms of the damage output. And I can just sit here and tank this tower and just laugh at it. And almost straight up just take a tower without even having minions there to soak them up. And there's nothing they can do. They can't slow me down. They can't stop me. So I can easily fight two of these champions at once. Pike jumps in, dumps his abilities. Nunu does a fully charged ultimate. He just doesn't do anything to me. I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna run around. Oh, there he goes. He's dead. Oh, there's Pike. He's trying really hard. Oh, he's dead. That's it. It's one versus two, and it's not even a challenge. They had opportunity to get away. They could have just landed a stun and ran for it. They kept coming. Oh well. <laughs> and so Stark's Gate, Stark's Gate is a fantastic item on Garen. Lots of health, lots of damage. You get this huge shield that is worth 75% of your bonus health. That is enormous. I'm getting a shield that blocks almost 800 damage. And then it gradually decays, but if you're getting dumped on by three, four players, it will save your life. You also get 30% tenacity for eight seconds, which reduces the uh, effectiveness of stuns and uh, crowd control abilities. So I went ahead and bought a BF sword for that extra 40 damage. So at this point, I just have a lot of HP, I have a lot of damage, a tactical move. Went ahead and flashed and hiked. My ultimate is up, let's we'll drop that. Somehow Nunu manages to survive that. Uh, yeah, TF is just getting slaughtered. And this GP is like, I'm out of here. I didn't feel like chasing him, so I just kept whacking up the tower. But you know. I think I tried to hit him with that Q at the last second, and I just couldn't land it. There's the Starks Gauge. Just, yeah. Huge, huge shield. The other great thing about Garen, once you get a huge amount of health, his passive is absurd. He has not been struck by damage or enemy bonus for four seconds. He regenerates 212 health, or 8% of max health. This doubles, this doubles when he's below 50%. So he just gains a ridiculous amount of health really fast. 
almost died there. Uh, my teammate jumped in and just decided to kill everybody, so I was totally fine. So look at this. I was down to like a quarter health or a tenth of a health. And just like that, I'm up to half again. Oh, I'm up to two thirds. I'm up to three quarters. <laughs> I don't have to go back to base. I can almost die and then be back to full health in a few seconds. And this is incredible sustain. Garen just beating his opponents up. He doesn't have to go back to base. He can just keep chunking everybody. And there's the first hit down. Or the first hit down. And we're at 43-16. Their GP is doing some work. He's actually a positive KDA, a 6-8. Probably the best player they had, honestly. Um, but yeah, the 1 in 10 TF is just not good. Uh, Pike got him with skin is deep. 3 6 Alawi, okay, not terrible. Pike doing 5 11. He's old back there. But yeah, the mid lane in general fed so hard. They're 1 11, 1 in 10. That's. <laughs> what in the world are you going to do with that? Top lane 10 0, 13 0 jungle, or 13 2 jungle, 13 2 mid. He just, he just obliterated them. There was nothing they could do. Uh, yeah, this is, this is crazy. A lot of we got that nice E down, and uh, there's nothing more annoying than getting hit by a Lowey's E. Fortunately, with Garen, you just outrun it. So the game again turns into a little bit of a slugging match at this point, where we've got two of their hips down, we're getting them into base. And they just keep stubbornly digging in. So someone manages to kill Azir. They get a nice fat juicy 400 gold bounty. But again, we now have a 12,000 gold lead. Just to put that in perspective, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, Sterics Cage. It's worth 2,200 gold. Uh, six Sterix cages, right? Got a 12,000 gold. Oh, sorry, it's 13,000. That's a lot of stat. That's a lot of health and damage you get on Sterix Gage. This is every one of my teammates having one, and every one of theirs not having one. And then we'll take a six star Gage and we'll actually throw it into the, the other person. That's the difference the gold advantage makes is being able to just do so much more damage and at the same time uh, you can take so much more damage like it makes your entire team better and this just creates the snowball effect there's nothing they can do to stop it's like it's just we're just gonna laugh at everything they try so that's it. That's that's the absurdity of League of Legends. Uh, games like this are at least interesting. They're cool. They're different. It's it's kind of exciting. And so it brings me back to the game. Even though I've been playing for it feels like a decade now, but I just keep playing because you get these absurd absurd games. I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> We'll see what happens this time. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, leave a like, comment in the bottom. Let me know if you want to see more League of Legends videos. And, uh, yeah, keep it real. Peace.